Uh, dear everyone, colleague, friends, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are, I'll greet you with all the greeting that you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending where you are in this universe. Assalamu alaikum, uh, bonsoir, and others. So I'll greet all of you with all the different greetings, and I'm wishing you that uh, you are living in a very prosperous, tranquil life in this difficult time. First of all, let us congratulate our uh, brothers and sisters from the Orthodox churches who are celebrating the birthday of Jesus, peace be upon him, today on the 7th of January. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all your days happy, joyful, tranquil as well. Today, uh, we're talking about uh, the 24th episode of Fatfada uh, 5 to 5, which is a series which has started last year. And today, we're talking about some challenges we are facing during our life and the social life on social domain and humanitarian work. And what is the relationship between the donkey and the word or the kalima in Arabic? As I mentioned this yesterday in the Arabic version of this talk, today I will mention it in the English version of this talk. Bear with me and be patient, please. Uh, the last quarter of 2021 was for me, I was very active, I was very motivated, I was very enthusiastic and moved. I traveled a lot. I visited about two, five, six countries. I met uh, with uh, tens of groups of uh, young people in different countries. I met with hundreds of community members and many community leaders, imams, sheikhs, leaders of organizations in different countries. I learned a lot, a lot, a lot from them. I was impacted during this period of time, October, November, December, by the chivalry, vigor, and uh, ferociousness, ferociousness, ferociousness of the young people. And I was taken back through my time machine to the 20s of my age, 50 years ago. I remember the good old days when I was 20, 21, 22, 23, with the same stamina, with the same uh, power. My dreams were, under, were, were, unle were unleashed when I was with young people. My desires were renewed and my energies met together with the energies of all these groups of young people. I felt I am at the spring of my life again and again and again, and I'm still at the spring of my life again and again and again. Welcome, Anwar, if you are back from Afghanistan. Greeting to you, Anwar. I, I was watching you, your great dedicated work, humanitarian work in Afghanistan, in Herat, in Kabul, and others. Welcome you back. I'll speak today, today, about different stages of my social and humanitarian life. The four important stages and two messages. The four important or five important stages are the stage of the donkey, the musaharati, which is the wake-up caller during Ramadan, producing the product, filling the gap policy, and the blender. The two uh, messages to you, young people, young people, all of you, there's no life who can live on this planet Earth without challenges. Either we face different unexpected challenges or we created the challenge. Either we create the challenge or we face the challenges. And this is what we are facing over the last 60 
or 55 or nearly 65 years of my life. And 40 of them were in humanitarian and social work. So challenges are a never ending story. Are never ending stories. Sometimes you plan, sometimes it comes all of a sudden to you. The second one is ad admonition, reminder for our young humanitarian and social worker living in the West, especially during the COVID, where everybody was telling, don't go to office, don't go to office, don't go to office, stay at home, stay at home, stay safe. I will mention to you two stories, a story of a young sister, young girl from Syria, her only wish was to have a new tent for her family, nothing else. There was no dream. She was not dreaming to go to university. She was not dreaming to become a doctor or a professor or a pilot or a teacher or a nurse or a politician. No, she wants, she wanted a tent, just a tent. When she was asked on the television and she said, please, can someone bring me a tent? This was all dream. Some of those children, as Anwar is coming back from Afghanistan, will have a dream to have a pair of shoes, new pair of shoes, books to read, schools to go to, clinic to be treated by, uh, in, with the doctors, and it's very, very simple, or miss football to play with. This is their dreams. While we're still under the lockdown of COVID, frightening ourselves to go to our offices in the middle of Europe and America where it's very safe. Very safe, safe. It's not safe for me to go to the office, brothers and sisters, but we still look at our field workers and push them to the corner to get the information. And something like this young girl whose dream was just to get a new tent for the family. The second sad story, which you all received recently, a young woman who traveled all the way illegally from Afghanistan. She wanted to go to the land of honey, the land of uh, milk and honey and dreams with the two young children. It was snowing at the border of Iran and Turkey, border between Iran and Turkey. She took off her coat and covered her two young children, eight and nine, and she died frozen. This is the people that we claim that we are helping and who are their champion. My message to you, young humanitarian, male and female, while this is the dream of the young Syrian girl, just a tent, and this was the end of the life, a young woman was trying to find a new way of life for her and her children, and she died in the middle of the snow. And we're still telling one another, don't go to office. Don't go to office. It's not safe. Stay home. What message that we are giving to the people who are paying our salaries? You know who are paying our salaries as humanitarian workers and social workers? Are those orphans and those displaced people and those refugees and those victims of war. And while we're actually trying to look after ourselves, oh no, I can't go to work, COVID, 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 COVID. So this is my uh, remark or my message to you young people. If you have a message, we have to be with the people there. Take care, look after ourselves, take the vaccination, take the booster doses, we'll make all the necessary precautionary measures, but we'll be with the people. 
not to be away from even to go to the office. This is my introduction to the talk of today. Donkey. Donkey is some animal that I respect and I love very much. Why? Because the donkey is a very hardworking individual, being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very committed, very dedicated, very zealous. Yani he is to the point. He has a mission to do to accomplish. That's a donkey. Working very hard. Never complained. Never complained to his master or to her master, mistress. No. No. That's why when we are young, especially when I came to the West, have no idea. And this is the first stage of my life in humanitarian and social work. Have no idea about what social work or what humanitarian work is or was. I have to intensify my work to get experience, to get knowledge, and to learn. Keep learning, 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 learning. Make a mistake, but learn. Keep, keep learning. Keep failing and standing up, failing and standing up, failing and then standing up. While you are young, my brothers and sisters, inexperienced, cover the lack of experience and the lack of knowledge by extra work. If it needs for you, when you have this responsibility to work for five, six, seven hours a day, make them 10 hours. Make them 12 hours. Because one day, you will become the teacher who is teaching people your experience, who will be directing the people right, left, or center. But you cannot do this unless you work hard in the stage of the donkey hood. And this was the first 20 years of my experience while I was in the, search, in the, in the social and the work from the 80s till the end of 90s, working hard like a donkey. The second stage of my life was, or is, the Saharati is somebody who gave us the wake-up call in Ramadan. You know, when you are in Ramadan and somebody wants to wake you up to pray for Fajr or to have Sihri or to have all these sort of things, he come with a drum, with a group of people, and make some beautiful songs after midnight to wake everybody up to go and either make Sihri or either go to the mosque to pray. The stage of Musaharati or wake-up caller for me came after the first 20 years. Why? Because I had enough knowledge, I had enough experience, and I have a vision, and I have a direction and a message. So we started at the age of 50 when I was there in the second phase of my life, which is the stage of Musaharati, to guide people, to give a message to give direction, to train people, because you can't just gain all this knowledge and experience the first 20 years of your life when you work hard like a donkey, like myself. Then after that, you sit, sit actually in the office just doing the same thing again. No, you have to comprehend the knowledge and the experience that you have gained. Then you go out and become a wake-up caller to the people who are not aware what's happening around them, what's happening in their society, what's happening in their community, what's happening in the neighborhood, what's happening for humanity and humanity. This is the second stage of your life, young man and young woman. First of all, to work hard, 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 and like a donkey, like myself, then to start guide people, direct people, teach people, and give them a message as well, and give them the wake up call. Give them the wake up call. This is the second phase of or stage of our life in humanitarian and social work. The third stage, we need to think about having a product. If any one of us, male or female, young or old, having the measure, the vision, and the message and the direction and the experience and the knowledge, he or she has to produce a product that 
the community needs it. We must go to the community with a product. If it is a cup, if it's a pencil, if it's a small sack, we have to go to the community with something that the community needs. Even if we go to them with what we call a rubbish bag to collect the rubbish. Because if no one collects the rubbish from the streets, we will end up with a lot of uh, infested infection from small animals, uh, insects, parasites, and, 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 and. So you have the third stage is to think about a product that the community needs and produce it. First is the donkey stage. Second is the wake-up caller stage. Third is to think seriously about what the community needs from you. So you can respond to that by producing your own product. The fourth is to fill the gap. Take it from me. There's no community on earth that have no gaps. No community, no matter how strong the state is, how rich the state is, how technically, uh, technologically advanced, scientifically advanced the state is, that you will never find it solid. Must be some gaps inside the community. Go and find these gaps and fill it. Don't do what others are doing. Do what community needs you to do. But when you fill the gap, you fill the gap with a product. Like in this image in front of me, if you look from a distance to a wall, you might think it's a solid wall. But if you come and zoom in, you find a lot of small gaps in this wall. You cannot see the small gaps unless you go down to the depth of the community, you see the infrastructure of the community, and to identify the gaps, and you fill such a gaps with a product that the community needs, that the community needs, that the community needs. This is number four, fill the gap philosophy. Number five, I am at the age over 60, or when I was in, uh, in Spain, they celebrated my 17th birthday. And 17, if you reverse, um, change the, the numbers, you know exactly how old I was. And I have the images of this. I'll send it to you on the YouTube uh, with a link, inshallah. At this age, you have to come down from your ivory coast as a leader, as a president, as a chairman, or as a professor and sit down with the grassroots community, with the young people, with the generation to come, and sit down and blend yourself or blend your thoughts and idea with the ideas and thoughts of the young people. That's why I called it the blender or the mixer, the stage of the mixer where uh, we sit down together, you, and the young people, the young generation, sit down, listen to them, and see their ideas, and put your idea together. Then marry both ideas, or all ideas, and let the young people to get the new idea that they were a part of its creation, so they can change it into an initiative, then they can change it to a product, they can change it to a project, then they can change it to a program. So the blending stage is very important for the experienced people like the senior one who should sit down. If you look at this image in front of me, I'll just send it to you later on. Uh, you'll find that I'm sitting with people in the, in the room with about seven young girls and about four young people. The average age was about 26, 27. I was the youngest amongst them. I was 17. I do understand how old I was last month on the 9th of December. So the blender stage. So let me take you again to these five or six points. I said, there's no life without challenge. 
we have to realize the message of our mission as a maternal and social worker and be with the people whenever they need us and don't be scared of being with them. The first stage of our life, we have to work through the philosophy of the donkey, hard working stage to gain the experience. Then become wake up caller. Then start to produce product that the community needs. Then try to find the gaps in the community to fill these gaps with product. Either we produce the product first or we fill the gap, we we'll identify the gap first. I prefer that to identify the gap first, then we produce the product. Then actually to sit down with the new generation, young people to blend your thoughts and idea with their thoughts and idea. So I mentioned five points. What is that to do with the word or kalima? What's the relationship with the donkey and the kalima or the word, as, as mentioned the title of the talk? Kalima is something that I read, the word. Yeah, kalima is the word. So just please le, 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 uh, remember this. When I, when I keep saying kalima, 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 that means the word. This was advice from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Mu'adh ibn Jabal. When he was asking him to control what his tongue is talking about. And he said to Mu'az, may your mother grieve your loss. O oh, Mu'ad, are the people toast into the fire upon their faces or upon their noses except because of what their tongues have wrote or have said? Takaratka ummuka Mu'ad. It is a tongue that when, when, when we wake up in the morning, all the organs of the bodies will beg the tongue to control itself. To say the good thing, to take all the organs of the body, including the skin and the others, to heaven. And instead of the tongue, can take them to hellfire. This was the advice, the sound advice of Prophet Muhammad to Mu'adh. In our work, we talk too much, especially humanitarian workers, especially fundraisers, especially advocates. Talk too much, too much, too much, too much, isn't it? Watch what you talk about and listen to what you want to talk about before you say it. Kalima is something mentioned by one of the Egyptian poets, a very literate man. He imagined the dialogue between Al Walid who was the envoy of, Al of, 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 of Yazid ibn Muawiyah to Al Hussein alayhi salam. Yazid ibn Muawiyah wanted to take the, the allegiance from Al Hussein alayhi salam because he wanted him to recognize that he is the new Khalifa. And the, the, the uh, Abdul Rahman al-Sharqawi imagined this dialogue between both of them when the Walid came to uh, Al Hussein alayhi salam and told him, Ya, oh, your grandson of the Prophet, وسلم, son of Lady Fatima alayhi salam, son of Ali alayhi salam. It is just a word. Just say it. Kalima. Just say it. It's nothing more than a kalima. Then the response of Al Hussein السلام, was very decisive, comprehensive, and addressing not only him, addressing all of us. You know what he said? Al Kalima, which is the word. Do you know what is the meaning of Al Kalima? The key of heaven is Al Kalima. The entry of heaven by Al Kalima and the Allah judiciary is Al Kalima. The key of heaven is Al Kalima. The entry of heaven by Al Kalima, Allah judiciary is Al Kalima. If Al Kalima knows Al Hurma, if people respect Al Kalima, 
the dignity of our kalima will be for us listed supply because you only say what needed to be said al kalima is nur and some of al kalima some of al kalimat are qubur al kalima is light or glow and some of kalimat words is like graves Some kalima, some kalimat khla'a. Ba'd al-kalimat khla'a. Some kalimat khla'a. Like a citadel or a castle. That shields humanity, nobility. Some kalimat are the castles or fortresses that shield humanity. The shield humanity's nobility. This is the kalima, al walid. Al kalima furqan, a distinction between a prophet and prostitute. This is a prophet, this is a prostitute. The distinction between both of them. And this is what you can see nowadays. Some of these media presenters, talk show, acting like not like prophets, but like the other one. Al-kalimah to furqan between a prophet and prostitute. Al-kalimah to furqan between a baghiyin wa nabi. With al-kalimah, we remove the sorrow. With al-kalimah, we remove the sorrow. With the word, we remove the sorrow. Al-kalimah nur glow and the guidance followed by the ummah when you say a kalima becomes a guidance for the whole ummah for the whole humanity okay when they were asking imam ahmad ibn hanbal about the opinion whether the quran is created or not you know what he said it's the word of allah and that's it so just yes say it is created so mahmoon will not punish you Said, you know, if I say something like this, millions of people are waiting for my opinions outside. Al kalima is a guidance. The word of the man, the word of the leader, the word of the scholar, the word of the scientist is a guidance for Ummah, for humanity. Al kalima nur and the guidance followed by Ummah. Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus was Al kalima enlightened you know enlightened universe with al kalima taught it to the fishermen and made guidance to the for the universe the kalima of jesus kalimatullah isa ruhullah isa was the kalima kalima for humanity enlightened humanity and taught his kalima to the fishermen to become guidance for the universe. Al kalima is shaking the brutal ones, shaking them. Zalim. Al kalima is a freedom force. Al kalima is a responsibility. Al kalima, man is al kalima. The honor of man is al kalima and Allah Almighty is al kalima See, this is the kalima And this was the response of al Hussein alayhi salam to whom? To al Walid, which is the envoy of Yazid ibn Muawiyah, as Abdurrahman al-Shalqawi imagined it. So when you work in this humanitarian or political or economical leadership, you know that the kalima is exactly what al Hussein was talking about. It was just, just a verbal expression. No, it's a guidance, enlightenment. Noor, enlightenment. And saving lives of people. So this is the value of working as a donkey at the very beginning. And this is the value of the kalima that you say to a poor people 
to a poor young young daughter like the sister the young girl who was her dream was to have a tent at the beginning of the year or to mention it to the woman who died covering the children with her clothes and she died in the middle of the snow the afghani woman al kalima we claim that we are the champions we are the workers we are the savior but we are nothing like this because we say what we don't do and we overprotect ourselves while the providers or the children the orphans who pay our salary our salaries are in the middle of the snow this is the kalima my message to you young people my message to you the year of 2021 has passed with all it is sad most of it was sad and very few good news that we have witnessed i have presented to you the different stages of my life donkey wake up caller uh blender mixer filling the gap and producing the product all this my social and material life over the last 40 years let us believe that for every period of time for every period of time for every period of time that we live on this planet there is a practical applicable social philosophy it's not something what يعني, for every period of time there is practical applicable social philosophy for every period when we were young inexperienced fit and strong lively and hyperactive having much less responsibility alert and sharp emotional and having plethora of ideas and initiatives it was incumbent upon us to increase our dedicated working hours to compensate the lack of our practical applicable social experiences this is the period which needed us to work hard to gain more practical applicable social experience and it's the philosophy of this period of time this is not only for the social and humanitarian workers but is also required for all the different specialities particularly during the period of the time this period of time of our life when you are young when you are young you have to work very hard very hard to learn very hard to gain experience very hard to try and try and try and try then you become moving from the donk stage to the wake up caller stage we were not born the professional experts philosophers or scientists innovators or theologians creatives or nobles reformers or selected attendants inventors or wise men and women we have been born as suckling babies neither knew our enemies nor our place of birth this is how we were born this is how we were born we were looked after by our caring parents and loving families struggling inside the hard resourceless avenues of life hard resourceless avenues avenues of life depending on whom depending on supporters who have no food or water working through drying forests having no lands or skies having a companion who knows nothing about the enormity of our calamity no the enormity of our life is not in the resources that we have or we don't have but it is how our stubborn destiny is treating our foolish dreams our enormity is in our life is not in the resources that we have or don't have but is in our stubborn destiny 
is how our stubborn destiny is treating our foolish dreams. What we need to do to prove, what we need, we need to prove young men and young women and fix with you, young people, is pioneering innovation and invention are not the byproduct of coincidence. Never, never rely on luck or coincidence. Pioneering innovation and the invention are not the byproduct of coincidence or the mere luck syndrome, MLS, no. Nor the personal or family relationship, no. Tribal or ethnic connection, no. Organizational or sectarian membership, no. But instead, it is the ultimate outcome of seriousness and diligence, patience and perseverance, trials and determination, exertion and sacrifices, and failing, then succeeding. This is how we become pioneer, and this is how we become inventive, innovative individual and creative as well. This is what we see clearly in sports championships, and particularly because most of you young men and young women love football, watch football, become mad about football. Football becomes like a new religion nowadays. Particularly in football matches where we find the winning goals is scored at the last second of the injury time. Because what? Because of this kind of determination to win. Trials, 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 shoot at the goal, shoot at the box there to score the goal. Young people, please be aware that your youth time period, your youth time period, is designed by Allah for pursuing, learning, and gaining different experiences in life. It's not designed for amusement, hop-ups, hurly-burly, relaxing, or chilling. No. A lot of young people nowadays say, chill, especially our people in the West. Chill out, ah, chill out, ah, chill out, ah, relax. Can do it tomorrow, can do it next week. No. Youth time period is designed by Allah for pursuing, learning, and gaining different experiences in life. It's not designed for amusement, hop ups, hurly burly, relaxing, or chilling. Abu Barza al Asmi al Al Salmi narrated that the Prophet said, the feet of the slave of Allah shall not move on the day of judgment until Allah asked him about five things. His life and what he did with it. His knowledge and what he did with it. About his wealth and about what he did with it and about how earned, how he earned it, and how he spent it, then his body and his health. This is what actually, what actually Allah will ask us. Our life, our knowledge, our wealth, and our health, and our health, and our health. Young people, please be aware that giving opinion, yani if you want to give fatwa, if you want to give fatwa, welcome Brother Anas Abu Ghalia, welcome Sister Aminata, you must be from West Africa, inshallah. Young people, please be aware that giving opinions, fatwa, and direction is not permitted before, before, before learning, 
Number one, gaining different scientific and social experience. Number two, mastering new skills. Number three, after numerous trials and gaining new experience after failure and success. Building solid confidence. I say it them again. Remember young man and young woman that you can't give an opinion and direction to others unless or before learning, number one, gaining different experiences, scientific and social. Number three, mastering new skills through numerous trials. Number four, gaining new experiences through failures and success in life. Number five, building solid confidence. You must be confident what you're talking about. We have to give inheritance to younger generation. While we are in position, we have to give inheritance to those of, 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 of what? We have to give inheritance of the cognitive, applicable, practical, academic knowledge. This, all this knowledge does not belong to us, but belongs to community. Then we have to pass it to the future generation. We have to give inheritance of this cognitive, applicable, practical, and academic knowledge to the young people while we are in charge and in leadership position. And this is what is called, I call it social leadership inheritance. I call this social leadership inheritance. Social leadership inheritance. Through what? We have to give inheritance of this cognitive, applicable, practical, acad and academic knowledge to the young people while we are in charge and in leadership position. And this is what we call social leadership inheritance through the following. Organizing discussion groups and creating dialogues between different parties, old and young. Designing training and rehabilitation program for the younger people. Formulating a specific empowerment scheme, empowerment scheme, empowerment scheme, empowerment scheme, by creating the vice and vice leadership policies. The vice, who is going to be your vice chairman, a young man or a young woman, while you are a chair person, while we are still in leadership position. Vices and vice leadership policies. Thank people should be shadowing the current leadership, then becoming leaders in training, while the existing leaders in authority, and then ultimately they will become the new leaders either during the last stage of the outgoing leaders in office or soon after they leave. The shadowing process, we we'll talk about social leadership inheritance, we we'll talked about the vice leadership policies, then we talk about leadership and training. Let me pass this message to all of you, which I mentioned during my talk earlier on. What was the, what's the message? There is no society whatsoever without gaps. No matter how strong such a society, how strong such a state or society, no matter how scientifically and technically advanced just such a state or society, no matter how rich it is, the state is. Say it again. There is no society without gaps. No matter how strong, scientifically and technically advanced and rich it is, the state is. Such gaps cannot be seen by the far, far away well wishers. No, no, no. They will never see it. Or the social tourists, no. No, neither the social tourists or the far away well-wishers, far away well-wishers, they are only seen by those social community workers who work closely at the bottom of the community and connecting themselves to its social infrastructure. I'll say it again. There's no society without gaps. No matter how strong, scientifically and technically advanced and rich its state is. Such gaps cannot be seen by the faraway well-wishers or the social tourists 
they are only seen by those social community workers who work closely at the bottom of the community and connecting themselves to its social infrastructure. Our duty, young people, is to keep filling these gaps, keep filling these gaps, keep filling these gaps by producing much needed community products and not imposing on them excellent products that we produced, but they are not in need for them. Produce what the community needs, not what you like to produce. Let us be productive, not crappling, achieving, not postponing, guiding, not misleading, educating, not ignoring, constructing, not distracting, assembling, not dispersing, uniting, not dismantling, exerting, not holding, providing, not turning away, patient, not impatient, hoping for his reward and the effort of his punishment, believing in his book and dreaming for his pleasure. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was my, my, my final message to you, uh, young people. Uh, young people. I said again, let us be productive, not crippling, achieving, not postponing, guiding, not misleading, educating, not ignoring, constructing, not distracting, assembling, not dispersing, uniting, not dismantling, exerting, not holding, providing, not run turning away, patient, not impatient, hoping for his reward and afraid of his punishment, believing in his book and dreaming for his guidance. And this is the end of my reminder with you today about the relationship between the philosophy of Don Quixote and his, uh, uh, and his uh, hard work and the value of the word or al-kalima which he mentioned by al Hussein alayhi salam in the proverbs written by uh, Abdurrahman al-Sharqawi, the late poet and author from Egypt. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I welcome also my brother Assam Shakir and sister Sarwa Nagar and every one of you. And I hope uh, that if you want uh, to contact me or somebody want to contact me, I can give you uh, my mobile number and WhatsApp number so we can talk about more things, inshallah. And God bless you. And I, at the beginning, I was congratulating our Orthodox uh, churches in, on earth of the birthday of Jesus, peace be upon him today, inshallah. And I hope that everyone will have a peaceful, tranquil, uh, safe uh, life, inshallah, wherever they live. And good evening, good, good morning, good or afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. So in Australia now, it's nearly good morning. In uh, Canada, it's good afternoon. In UK, it's good evening. Uh, and all over the place, it is Assalamu Alaikum for the Muslims. And Assalamu Alaikum even for you, and I'm Muslim, inshallah. I love you all. Wassalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.